Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. And the devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for the homily. My dear brothers and sisters, good morning. I'd like to begin with a little question. How many of us here love the character Mickey Mouse? Would you please raise your hand? Mickey lovers, all right. You know, I have a confession to make. I feel the same way. I'm also a Mickey Mouse lover. But today we shall not talk about Mickey Mouse. We shall talk another, about another character, not belonging to the Disney family, but to the Warner Brothers Looney Tunes. Is that little creature... A little bird. The name is Tweety. Ambilis, grave. All right, Tweety. You know, I checked. What is the gender of Tweety? Lalaki ba siya o babae? Correct. All right. The internet tells me his a uh, he. Tweety is a male. <laughs> grave bird. Okay. And we know that uh, Tweety has an arch enemy. The name is. Sylvester, the cat, and who always ends up victorious between the two. It's always Tweety, of course. Now, let me give you an ironic twist to the story. Ready kayo, ha? Huh? If you have tissue with you, this is going to break, you know, that image of the victorious Tweety. It happened one summertime, and Tweety, just like the rest of us, are suffering from the heat of the Son. And ito na si Sylvester. He puts up a store selling ice cold lemonade. And Tweety saw the, the offer and he said, I'd like to have a glass of the, your ice cold lemonade. Now, Sylvester says, Okay, you can have an, a glass of it, but you know, I have a project to make. I'm coming up with a feather fan. And to have a feather fan, I need feathers. So if you would help me out with my project, I can give you a glass of ice-cold lemonade. Ito pa yung bottomless 
offer. Ah, okay, so sobrang sarap nung offer, di ba? And Tweety thought to himself, well, feathers of my left wing would be harmless if I give them away. So I think that's okay. And so the exchange was made. Tweety gets to have a bottomless treat of the ice-cold lemonade, and in return, he gives away feathers of his left wing. Fine. Day one. Second day. Sylvester puts up another store, and it's now a store selling corn cob Japanese corn. Alam niyo bang paborito ni Tweety ang Japanese corn? And so when he saw the offer, sabi niya, Whoa, I'd like to have corn cobs for myself. And Sylvester says, Sure, but you know, I have a problem. The feathers are not enough. So if you would oblige, I'd like to have more feathers. Siguro yung feathers ng right wing. And Tweety thought to himself, Feathers of my right wing would be okay. It would not be harmful. So okay lang siguro na ibigay ko rin. Alright, so the exchange was made. Tweety got all the corn cobs that he wanted in exchange for the feathers of his right wing. Day two. Third day. Si Sylvester nagpot up naman ng store selling hot dogs. Alam niyo bang si Tweety mahilig din sa hot dogs? It's not only kids can tell. <laughs> Birds can tell. Alright, and when he saw the hot dogs, he said, I'd like to have hot dogs for myself. And, and Sylvester says, of course you can have all the hot dogs you want, but here's my situation. I still lack feathers. So if you would oblige, I'd like to have the feathers of your tail. And Tweety thought, thinks to himself, tail lang naman, so walang problema doon. Fine, I'll give you the feathers of my tail. And the exchange was made. And so, Tweety gives the feathers of his tail in exchange for Hot dogs. Now, can you imagine how Tweety by this time looks like? A bird without feathers on the left and right wings and on his tail and with the fat belly. And Sylvester makes his move. You know, I still need more feathers. And I think I don't have to ask for them. I can get them myself. And Sylvester runs after Tweety. Kapag hinahabol ang ibon, what will the bird do? Fly. But Tweety cannot fly anymore. And with the big and fat belly, he could hardly run. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, it happened. Sylvester, for the very first time in history, got Tweety. And Sylvester lived Happily ever after. Yung burol ni Tweety would happen next week. Okay, what is this about? One word. This is a story that gives us a kind of an anatomy, an analysis of what temptation is all about. And you know, that's also the focus of the gospel of today, the first Sunday of, Advent, of Lent. This is all about temptations. What are temptations? It's good to understand this at the beginning of, you know, the Sundays of, of Lent. We have immersed ourselves in the serious business of being one with our Lord, preparing ourselves for the holiest of seasons, 40 days of preparation. But the devil is also working. You know, not only around us, but within us. And the way he attacks us is so subtle. It goes by one word. And the word is temptation. Let's do an anatomy of it. I give you three key ideas of what temptations are all about. Ready? First point. Temptations are attractive. Would you say that line again, please? All right, attractive. Temptations are attractive. They have to be. The devil knows that. Because we don't easily fall for sin unless it is presented to us in a very attractive way. We don't take medicine naturally if we don't need it. Because medicines are, in general, 
What's the taste? Bitter. We don't like bitter things. But you know how it is? So that the medicine would be taken by kids, what have manufacturers done? They coated, sugar-coated the bitter pill so that it becomes attractive, you know, to kids. And so they take in the bitter pill, which tastes sweet. That's how it is. The devil coats with sugar, so to say. What is known to be sin? We fall for sin because we fall for temptation. Because temptations are attractive. Snow White fell for the apple because the ap apple looked so attractive. Eve fell for... No, not the apple. There's no mention of apple in the Old Testament. For the forbidden fruit. Why? What did the devil tell Eve? It's not true that you will die when you eat this fruit. What will happen? You will become like God. But that's attractive, you know? We will become like God. That's, you see, the temptation of the devil. Temptations are really made to be attractive. First point. Second point. Temptations are indicative. Would you say the word again, please? Indicative. What do they indicate? Temptations indicate our weakness. Because where we are weak, that's where the devil attacks. You know, he's like a professional boxer. He does not just prepare his body and his mind for a bout. The professional boxer also studies the opponent and watches for the weakness of the opponent. And where the opponent is weak, that's where the professional boxer would hit the hardest. Pag mahinahina yung panga mo sa pangakababanatan ng boxingero, right? Okay. Pag matigas ang panga mo, tigas ng mukha mo, boxers to. Alright? Hindi ka babanatan sa mukha. Hahanapin niyo yung weak point mo at dun ka babanatan. Is there anyone majoring in psychology here among young people? Any, any who, anyone who uh, majored in psychology? A, B, psychology, B, S, psychology? I'd like to know. Ah, okay. Alright. This may hurt you a little if I say this. So, bumubusina na ha. Did you know that the devil has a PhD in psychology? <laughs> Sorry na lang sa mga psychologists. A PhD in psychology, what do I mean by that? He knows human nature so well, right? Is there something more? He doesn't only know human nature in general. He knows each one of us inside and out. I can even say he knows us better than we know ourselves. He does his assignment. And where we are weak, that's where we are attacked the most. This indicates where we are weak. What? What? When we examine ourselves and we see, Bakit lagi akong bumabagsak sa kasalanan nito? I always fall for this kind of sin. I'm so weak in this. That's where the temptations are concentrated. Some of us are weak when it comes to food. Makakita lang ng pagkain. Hindi na makaresist. Okay. Some can say no, no to food. Somebody was telling me, Father, I have a seafood diet. Whoa, seafood diet. What is that about? Right. I eat when I see food. Ibang klaseng seafood diet yan. Right. My weakness is not about food. I can say no to that. But my weakness can be Money. And when given, you know, the opportunity to have a bigger share, then I go for that. And the devil would make use of that weakness. So all the temptations will be about money. Now, I can say no to money. I can say no to food. But I cannot no say no to stories. Stories about people. Chismis. Alam niyo yun? Kapag nakarinig ako ng chismis, so automatic, nangangati na yung dila ko. And I just have to share that. Cannot resist that. And all the temptations will be about stories. We would be bombarded with stories about people and you just find yourself sharing them. You fall for that sin. No, I can say no to gossiping. That's not my weakness. My weakness is in terms of 
time. I love my pillow more than my alarm clock. Alam niyo bang kadalasan yung alarm clock natin nagseselos na? Kasi lagi tayong ginigising. Pero we love our pillows more than the alarm clock. And so we say, no, not yet, not yet. Uh, five minutes, snows. So another five minutes. Uh, not yet, uh, another five minutes. Until it becomes 30 minutes extension and we lose, you know, the time that we have set our minds for. This is a temptation that we fall for. We call it also, masakit sabihin, laziness. That's my weakness. My weakness is games. So I'd like to immerse myself in serious work, but when I get to see invitation to computer games, then I fall for that. What are we saying here? What is the second point again? Second word, temptations are? Indicative, right? And so let's make use of that. Saan ako laging bumabagsak? Ano yung laging nagagawa kong pagkakamali? Dito ko mahina. Dito ko binabanata ng demonyo. At dito yung battlefield. This is the warfare. This is where I can also focus my attention and exert effort to resist temptation. Which leads us to the third point. The third point is, temptations are formative. Would you say the word again, please? You know, they form us. Let's not see temptation as a sin. No, temptations are not sinful in themselves. Lagi akong bombarded by temptations. Then I bring that to confession. No, it's not really a sin. What becomes sinful is when I say yes to temptation, when I give in, when I don't resist. Somebody was saying, Father, I always am bombarded by, by immature, impure thoughts. And they come every now and then, especially when I'm not, I'm not busy. And the priest says, you know, you don't have to dread those too much. As long as you don't entertain them, you don't fall into sin. And the man says, no, Father, it's not that I entertain them. It's that they entertain me. Ay, bang usapan na yan. That means you fall for that. You give in to that. Instead, you know, when you say no to sin, when you say no to temptation, then that forms you. That makes you a strong person. That makes you a person committed to the Lord. Today, we are reminded of this spiritual warfare. This is a battle. And it's a battle that's happening within. The devil tried to tempt Jesus away from his mission. You see how the devil worked? Jesus was so hungry. And so what did he give the devil as a temptation? Food. That's so attractive. And that indicates the weakness of Jesus at that moment. He was hungry. The gospel says that. He fasted for 40 days. Naturally, he was hungry. And so the temptation was food. And Jesus says, no, man does not live on bread alone. The devil failed. Here's another temptation. He sensed that Jesus also had that kind of fear, human as he was, of what would happen to him. Passion, death. And so the temptation was, let's take the easy shortcut. You don't have to go for that. You will have all the glory. You will have all the power if you just worship me. I'll give you everything. The whole world, in fact. I can do that. He failed once again because Jesus was led by the Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the good news for today. We take it from the beginning and we take it from the ending of the gospel. What is the beginning of the gospel? Jesus was led by the Spirit. The story of Jesus is our story. In these 40 days of Lent, let's allow the Spirit to lead us. Let's not allow the devil to take command of us. Let me put it this way. Don't give the devil a ride because he always wants to drive. Don't let him drive your life. Don't let him even come in. You see how, what happened? When the devil failed three times, 
you see the Gospel of Luke, what does it say? The devil left Jesus for a time. For a time. What does that mean? Was that the end of the series of temptations? No. He was tempted by the devil all throughout his life. Even on the cross, he was tempted. Temptations from everywhere. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross and we would believe you. That was a temptation. And Jesus would have given up to that temptation had he, been, had he not been so focused on the will of the Father, you see. This is the good news. As Jesus was victorious over the evil one, so can we be. We would always end up in a moral victory over the father of lies, over the devil. What's the secret? Let's allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit. Every day. Not the devil, the Spirit of God. And when we do that, when we allow Him to have command over our lives, then we would have a beautiful journey through this Lenten season and even beyond. Let this be our mental framework. In order to be victorious over sin, Let's not only avoid sin, let's avoid every occasion of sin. And what leads us to sin? Temptations. No to temptations. Yes, always to Jesus. Let this be our LSS for today. And the rest of the days of the Lenten season. And even beyond, as I said, what is the password? the buzzword, the last song syndrome, no to temptation. Yes, always to Jesus. Have a blessed Lenten journey.